racing today. We're not actually doing any uh, any computer related stuff today. Um, we're actually outside and we're on a road and we're heading up north of Adelaide. And the reason that we're doing this is we're out, we're basically on the trail of a old abandoned racetrack. It has been used for around about 60 years and is being overgrown by salt bush, basically. This isn't just any racetrack either. It's it hosted the Australian Grand Prix. Uh, that Grand Prix was run by Jack Brabham in a Cooper Bristol. Um, Stan Jones was there as well. Uh, I believe he was driving a Maybach. The, Mas the Maserati 250F was down there. It's an important, important place. So, I'll give you a bit of background as to exactly how it all came about, seeing as we've got a bit of time. Back, way back, before Australia had a round of the World Championship, we've had a, a Grand Prix. And I think it's something like the second oldest continuously running Grand Prix in the world. As a lot of the European countries stop hosting them during the war years and, and so on and so forth. So we've had a Grand Prix for a really long time. It wasn't around at the World Championship until 1985, but we've had a Grand Prix almost since since cars became since since cars came here really. Um, and the rule always was that each state would take its turn hosting hosting the race. So. You know, it would go from New South Wales to Victoria to RSWA and, and all the way around the country. And our races were normally held, I mean, we held them in a few different places. Um, Victor Harbour being one, um, Lobethal being the main one. And these races were all laid out on public roads. And we had, as I mentioned, Lobethal, um, which was laid out on public roads and was pretty much the, the spa of the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, that's what it was comparable to. It was a, a great circuit, very, very fast. But unfortunately, the problem with racing 1930s, 40s, 50s race cars that are, let's be honest, known for catching on fire at the slightest touch, on public roads, surrounded by stovey poles, trees, houses, etc., etc., is that usually within the first hour of the race, everybody who started was dead. So the government brought in a rule that there was to be no more racing on public roads, which left the Grand Prix in a bit of a problem because in the next couple of years, 1955, it was our turn to host the Grand Prix again. This band came in, I think, around 1952-53. So they hastily built this uh, this racetrack up at Port Wakefield, which is where we're heading to now. Um, it was quite hastily built, as I mentioned. Uh, it was narrow, it was short, it really wasn't suitable for a Grand Prix. It's sort of the equivalent of them saying that, you know what, we're not going to host the Australian Grand Prix at Albert Park anymore, we're going to send the Formula One cars to Barbagallo. It was that sort of thing. But we didn't have anywhere else to do it, so they quickly put together a track and hosted the race there. And it was only used for the one Grand Prix. Um, and, there, yeah, as I said, there were a number of problems with it. Number one, yeah, too short, too narrow. Um, and it was a pain in the ass to get to as well. It's a long, long way north of Adelaide. It's, I'm not sure on the exact measurement, but it's around about 100 k's, give or take. North of Adelaide. There was a lot of accommodation up there. Port Wakefield wasn't as big as it is now, um, and there really wasn't you know, a great deal of, of uh, facilities or anything up there to support such a big event. So by the next time that the um, Grand Prix came around to South Australia, they got hold of the disused Air Force uh, airfield at Malala and built a circuit there. The circuit still runs to this day. Just about everybody who is involved in, in motorsport in South Australia has driven there at one point or another, including me. So the circuit still runs. And a lot of the infrastructure that was originally taken to Ballala to set it up actually came directly from Port Wakefield. So what of 
Port Wakefield. Well, they just left it. That's all there is to it. They just left it. They left it there in a paddock, um, took all the infrastructure away, and that was it. Um, it's, it's basically it got closed. I think it ran its last race in 1961. Um, and has been sitting idle ever since. So, in terms of the actual existence of the track now, there's not too many people that, I mean, if you're a motor racing historian, you, you would definitely know about this. If you're not, however, and I guess I'm talking more to the people who aren't, it's, um, it, it's just remarkable that it's, it's, it's out there and no one really knows that much about it. I mean, some of the locals in, in Port Wakefield, some of the older ones, and if you think about it, anyone who was an adult at the time of those races is, is 80 years old now. You know, some of the older generation, they they know that the race existed, but in my experience, there's, there's only a very few people, like a handful of people, actually know where the track is. And as luck would have it, I know both. I know it existed, and I know exactly where the track is. I've been up there once for a bit of a look around, but I thought I would uh, go up there again and bring you guys with me and have a little bit of a look around because it's not every day that you get the opportunity to um, to find an old abandoned racetrack like that, especially not one with the, the history of having most of the Grand Prix. So um, I will pick you up again when we're a little bit closer. And uh, believe it or not, guys, here we are. This is it. This isn't the racetrack itself but the racetrack is here. You can't see it from the road. I'm just going to wander in and have a look around. And believe it or not guys, this is it. The scene of the 1955 Australian Grand Prix. Fast uh, right hand sweeper here that actually goes down onto a main straight. And up that way, which we'll walk in a second, is Tyre Soul's hairpin, but I just wanted to stop here for a second and give you a, a couple of pieces of evidence of what used to go on here. If you actually have a look here, that's one of the tires that they used to bury in the side of the track to act as a curb, act as an apex. Um, and there's another one just down here Just here. Been there since about 1950 odd, 1952, 53, when they put this place together. But I'm just going to walk against the flow of traffic. As you can see from the Google map image, you can only, the, the track's sort of been divided in half. Um, the other half's over there and is owned, I'm fairly sure, by that house that you may be able to see in the distance. And unfortunately, that's the side that all the, the pit and the start-finish straight is on. But according to Google Maps, there's almost nothing left of it anyway. It's uh, definitely in better condition, this side of the fence, than the other. But um, walking on an old Grand Prix circuit... Bit of a goosebump moment, really. You can still see some of the tarmac. It's almost completely gone. It's almost been completely reclaimed by the salt bush. very hot out here today. I'm not sure if you can hear the flies buzzing around. It's just coming up to 11 o'clock and the sun is definitely up. <laughs> All right, so we're just coming up to Tire Soul's hairpin. And this is by far the best preserved section of track. As I say, I've been down here before. 
and have walked my way around it but you can see off in the distance where we've just come from and this is the hairpin and I have sort of scoured this area fairly well and I cannot find any infrastructure any remnants anything that sort of suggests there was a race here other than the track itself so they really did take everything to Malalar but if you get out over here this is actually as wide as it was you can see how wide it was coming in here and around Apart from the track, there's just nothing left. Anyway, we'll continue on towards the uh, start-finish line. Not that we can get to it, but we can sort of get close-ish. doesn't actually look to be in much worse condition the last time I was here actually uh, about probably close to five years ago now Let's see some concrete laid down there and I believe and I could be wrong and perhaps someone can correct me on this that there used to be that the bike start finish grid was about here and I think there's still some paint on the road somewhere just a small amount they were actually going to extend this circuit but never got round to it sort of up in that direction and it could have been if not for the location it could have remained in service for many more years I suspect lap was only 2k's around it's a shame we can't walk the whole way I think the lap record was Jack Brabham I think it was shared between Jack Brabham and someone else I have to look it up a minute and three seconds but to be standing here Pretty damn amazing, really. It'd be nice without the flies, kind of everything. Got another old tyre up here. Maybe a motorbike tyre. See, so there's a few clues around if you know what you're looking at. curbing there I just can't help but feel it's a huge shame second oldest purpose-built racetrack in Australia after Phillip Island of course and this is what they've done with it see a couple more tyres there on the side of the track three actually get down and have a look at one actually I know they used to be painted with white paint. It's obviously long gone, apart from maybe sort of down there on the edge. I can't see a brand on it. 
I don't really want to touch it. Might fall apart in my hands. So we've got a turn here. This is actually turn two. We're going against the direction of traffic. And it's starting to get much more overgrown here. You can still make out the line, but there's salt bush popping up in the middle of it. It won't be long until it's gone. Here, the tarmac's almost totally gone, it's just dirt pretty much. nicer concrete section here. Concrete areas seem to hold up a lot better than the tarmac areas. Just seeing if I can see anything apart from the track. Anything that may have suggested there was a Grand Prix here. Kind of the fence line, just pretty much on the apex of turn one. This uh, fence bisects the circuit, and as you can see, as nice as as it would be to walk the whole thing, there's really nothing to see. The sheep on this paddock, and you really can't see anything. Once upon a time, I would have been looking at the pits. I don't believe there are any actual pit buildings there. But uh, open pits would have all been there. But I can't see anything. So this is the direction of travel, and this would have been turn one. I'm pretty much on the end of the start-finish straight right now. It was only a short straight. The back straight was much longer all right guys so I've actually just followed a, a small track that leads me down the fence line um, and brings us down to the main straight so as you can see here it's fairly badly overgrown and the track does continue on beyond the fence line there and then there's a couple of right-handers that bring you back onto the uh, straight that we were just on. Not sure if, sure if you can see the sheep moving around at the base of it. But what's on the other side of that fence is much worse worn than the section we're on. So here's the straight. Once again going against the flow of traffic here. And this will lead us up uh, again to the fast sweeper that we originated on when we got here. So as we walk now, would have been the old uh, Cooper Bristol and Maserati 250F coming straight towards us. 
it is seriously hot. Seriously hot. As I said, it had been about five years since I've been here and I didn't know how much more badly things would have deteriorated in the time since I've been here. So I wanted to get here ASAP once I decided to do the video. I'll tell you what guys, if I won Lotto, this would be getting fixed. Interestingly though, I mean if you think about it Somebody watching this video may actually have the means to Do something about this I mean, I don't know what the owner's attitude is to the paddock and the other half. I don't know But um, surely There's a way It's a part of motor racing history right here and surely it doesn't go out like this. Surely this isn't how it should be left. Grand Prix circuit, for goodness sake. Oh, sweat running everywhere. It's warm. And here we are back onto the sweeper again. A lot of old rubbish here. I don't know if that's got anything to do with the circuit or not. Probably doesn't. Old trough, a few old tyres. Maybe some of it does. Maybe probably doesn't. Could be just leftover, crushed up grandstand. Could be. Could be anything. It could be completely unrelated. I suppose. And this pretty much brings us back to where we started. That's the, obviously the main straight and the direction of travel down there, back straight. So that's it, Port Wakefield, rotting in a paddock here. But I mean really, if anybody who's watching this actually has the means to, to look into this, like I don't know. I think there's a lot of people that would be very happy if it didn't stay like this and eventually get just overgrown. Even if you never got permission from the council to run any races here, what a thing to own. I mean, loads of people have a classic race car, but imagine having your own Grand Prix circuit. Surely it's worth looking into. Surely it's worth looking into if you've got a bit of coin behind you. You could have a historic race meeting here every couple of years. But surely anything's better than this, isn't it? A piece of history like this. Anyway, this brings us back to where we started. So, um, you've pretty much seen everything we're able to see. Can't get across the fence to see the other part of it. But um, this is it. 1955 Australian Grand Prix, right here. And hopefully, hopefully, something gets done with it before it disappears forever. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. 
Um, if you like this video, you like to be notified of uh, when more come available, please leave a subscribe and, and like it so you can find it later on. And uh, if you do like this one, if you do like this video, I might do some others. There are some other historic racetracks, not like this, but there are some other historic racetracks around. Lobethal and so on, because they're all public roads, you can drive them. So uh, if you like this video, I might go and do that one next. Let me know. Okay, no problems guys, see you next time.